Welcome back to the job site, guys. We're starting a new job today at this house here. And this is a little interesting. If you kept up with my last little series where I was talking about or taking you through that wainscoting from uh, two weeks ago, I mentioned that we were gonna be here at this job. And we're gonna go inside and I'm gonna give you a rundown. Basically what happened in here is that somebody, this homeowner hired somebody to do some trim work and We'll go inside and I'll show you that it didn't really work out the way that she wanted it to work out. I'm going to go inside and show you what uh, they did wrong, you know, and um, how they could have done better and what we're going to do. All right, let's see what we got here. What we're going to be redoing is this cased opening right here. Now, I'll make it very clear to you that this video is not meant to talk down on whoever did this but i'm going to show you what they did wrong and i think we all have room for improvement so i'm not one of these high and mighty where you know i'm the best or whatever and i don't believe in that i don't i believe in having a humble attitude but let's just look at what they did wrong okay so basically she wanted them to make I don't, I know the lighting in here is not too good. I'll try to get on the other side of this. There, the lighting's better. So she had this done, this pillar done about, oh, a few years ago, I would guess, from what she told me. And she told the, the new guys that she hired that she wanted this cased opening to look like this. And you can see down there, there's a one by four with a panel molding base cap and then it's like a board and batten style, just pillar wrapped with crown molding. So the problem with, with this one is there's a lot of hard transitions. I went ahead and turned on some lights so you can see what's going on here. But the first thing I'll show you is down here. This was a weird transition. They had installed a baseboard on here, but it has been removed because she just had the floors refinished and they knew we were taking all this stuff out anyways but they had a baseboard on here that went and wrapped around this actually and then they try to like notch this panel molding out and then have this original baseboard still fit in the mix so that is really strange because there's no way you can get these three moldings coming in to match up any way. It's just too weird, especially with this. And then having a baseboard on here, that's just, that right there is just, that's not good. You don't wanna ever have moldings transitioning like that where you can't get them to match up. So that's number one. Now, in the reference picture that she showed me, because anytime I work with somebody, I asked them to maybe send me some reference pictures from just Google images so I could see what they like, what kind of designs they like. I could see what's going on in their mind and what they don't like. And the ones she sent me, what, what she had, and I did look similar to this, but there was no baseboard on here. I guess in their efforts to make it look like the pillar, they tried to put a baseboard on it, but you can't do that. When, you, when you're building it like this, it just doesn't work. All those hard transitions make for hard transitions and you can't get them to look good. Okay, the next thing, this right here, this whole section of molding, this whole part of the cased opening is just way too close to this wall for what they're trying to do. So they had to like cut into the stairs. So we'll probably have to fix that and then it just, it just doesn't look good. It's just really, really hard transitions again right there. So we're gonna build this whole wall out so we can have our casing just run next to it. Next thing, I don't know if you can see this, but there's a really, really bad bow right here. Just really bad curve. I don't know if that's their fault or what that is, if that's just the way the drywall is behind there, 
we won't know until we rip it out. So that's kind of a weird thing. I mean, I actually noticed that first thing when I came in, I saw that curve when I came in to give an estimate for this job. Um, let's see what we got over here. Um, well, same thing over here too. We're gonna have to build this wall out. This wall is all gonna be built out, so it's gonna pull this away from here. So it won't be just super, super hard transition right there where that panel molding they used as a casing comes on top and then comes down. And then same thing here. We have a uh, just a really hard transition there. So that's gotta go. And it looks like they had a little seam right at the end. So that somebody must have cut something short there. But it's just things like that. That crown too is really out of place. That has no, no place there. Again, I guess in their efforts to make it look like the pillar over there, they put a crown on it and it really, there is no reason to have a crown there. Just really, really hard transition and hard on your eye. Okay, so that's basically the breakdown of that one. Then we're, we are doing two more. It's gonna be this one over here on my left and then this one right in front of me. So this one right in front of me, you can see this one actually still has the baseboard on, but you can see where you'll never get those pieces to transition. That baseboard right there, the one on the left and the panel molding coming down, you'll never get that to transition the right way. And then we've got another seam here. So we, we definitely got our work cut out for us today. There's gonna be some drywall work that has to be done. And I told her about that. She's okay with it. She just wants this to be out of here. So when we, when we rip this stuff out, ours, since we're building it in a little bit more, the drywall is gonna be beat up behind it. So she's gonna have a drywall guy come in and fix that. Now, one other thing about this, if you look at that glass right there, you'll see around the perimeter of that glass, there's a panel molding. It's actually the same panel molding they used on the casing. And it's holding the glass in, that glass is sandwiched in there. So keep that in mind and we'll come look at this one. <clears throat> this one has glass in there too, but there's no panel molding. So that is very strange because this is right next to it and it doesn't match. And she actually didn't even notice that. When I came to give the estimate, I told her, yeah, that one has like a frame around it and this one doesn't. And she got more frustrated. <laughs> but that's just, I mean, that's bad. We gotta take all this stuff out. That glass is coming out, all of that, and it's just gonna be an eight foot cased opening. We're not gonna have the glass in there. We don't need the glass in there. They were trying to do that to be a little bit more fancy, but I told her, let's just, so all these match, we'll just take that glass out and they'll make them all the same, all these big cased openings. And then again on this one, they don't have any trim around the casing. Like the panel moldings that they have on those two, they don't have them on here. Very strange. And then the last thing I'll show you is if you look right there, the gap between the top of that casing and the bottom of that crown. Look at the gap on the drywall. How much drywall is there? Okay, you see that? If you go over to this one, you'll see it's a little bit smaller, the gap. And that's because there's a panel molding on that one. Now if you go over to this one, and then we get really small. So we're gonna have to build that down to make it match with these. So we're gonna be ripping all this stuff out. That's what we're doing today. We're gonna do the tear out. We're gonna get um, this floor masked off and we're just gonna get this stuff out of here and start making some progress on this job. But that right there, I just wanted to show you that because that's the real world. You know, it was a remodeling company that 
you know, basically one call does it all type of thing. And I've never been a fan of that. I've always been a fan of specialist. I don't like the jack of all trades. I believe there are guys out there who can do, that are like a jack of all trades, but there are very, very few of those guys. And I haven't met one yet, but I believe that they're out there. <laughs> so there's gotta be one, but most people can't do everything good. That's just the fact, I can't do everything good. I like to choose one thing and specialize in it. So we're gonna get to work here. We're gonna start masking these floors off, start tearing this stuff out. But that, all this stuff has to go. All right, now for the fun part. Get to destroy some stuff. As you can probably see from our last video, a lot of this, a lot of our job is ripping stuff out. What? That's not up to code. Heck no. <laughs> yeah, it'd be crazy. Whoa, these guys did some weird stuff, man. We'll be here all night though. <laughs> Oh no, that sounded bad, right? Yeah. <laughs> it was nothing. It was just breaking. But this is basically what we're working with. Now we're gonna use this one right here as our control. So however low this one is right here, we're gonna make the other one that low too. He's over there tearing that one out. And we're gonna bring this big one down to that. So we have a exact reveal between the crown molding and the new casing. What do you got over there, like the bottom of that? Seven. Seven? Mm -hmm. That's the bottom of the two by four? Mm -hmm. Seven, so this one's seven too. So that's probably why they put that one there. So we'll bring that one down. <laughs> What's that? Yeah. Yeah, we'll definitely have to shrink that one. So these can stay. Those other two cased openings are the exact same with what they already built down. So they did good on that. We're just gonna put some two by four going through here and that'll bring us right to seven, which is the drop on those two openings. So that'll be easy. Then we'll just put a um, two by fours on this wall to build that out away from the wall. And that should be it for the rough carpentry. Then we can get into the more finished carpentry side of things. So to do this top part, we're just gonna pocket hole it together. The exact depth that we need to come down is an inch and a half to get to that seven inches. And that's exactly what two by fours are. So we're gonna actually put this up laying down like this. So it's not gonna be like typical joist because this isn't structural at all. This is just to bring down our depth and then we'll be even with the other two cased openings. Yeah. 
Yeah, we'll probably have to put like one toggle bolt or like one in each one. How are you looking over there? Really good. Yeah, it's perfect over here. So once we get this in here, then we can just build that wall and it'll line up perfect with this. So I'll put it like right here in the middle. Yeah, these toggle bolts right here are pretty cool. And I have a tutorial video on how you can actually use the toggle bolts. They're real easy. So. And like that, we can let this thing hang now. And then when I tighten it up, it'll just pull it up. So that's what you can do when you don't have framing to get into the ceiling. But there's weight limitations, so you, you gotta look into all that. This obviously is really light pressure on it. Work. You good? Uh -huh. So with those toggle bolts, we're also able to, to screw into this two by four that comes across here. But since there was no framing in the middle here, that's why we put those in there. Okay, I'm gonna show y'all something real quick. This right here obviously has a straight edge, it's a level. I'm gonna show y'all how bowed this is. If you remember earlier when I was showing you the other work that we ripped out, how that piece was just bowed. This stud right here, there's a stud that runs vertical right here. I just tried to kick this wall in and I kicked this portion in you can see right there, but the stud, obviously, I'm not gonna be able to kick that in. But let's go right above where that, that part that I kicked in and watch how crazy the straight edge just rocks. So when I have it over here, I have about an inch and I'll show you what it looks like over there. You got about an inch on that side. So that's the kind of things you're gonna run into. This isn't gonna matter for us though, because we're since we're building this wall out, we're gonna have a two by four like this, and we're just gonna kind of float it off this wall. We're gonna use this level to make sure it's level. And we're gonna screw into that uh, that we just put in up there, and we're gonna screw into the hardwood floor, and we'll bring this out. And it's not, this isn't a wall that's structural, so we don't really need it to be, it's not holding up anything. So we're just gonna bring it out, work around that. If you didn't have that option, you'd probably want to bust that drywall out of there and you could take a circular saw and do some non-OSHA approved stuff with a circular saw <laughs> or you could take a planer and plane that board down that two by four back there until you got it back to uh, plumb but right now this thing is just really messed up so that's our plan we're going to build a wall it comes out to here Screw it into our framing up there, screw it into the hardwood floor with three inch screws. So we're good on it. Okay, so here's where we're at now. We got this kind of framed out. We had to do this in two sections. So this top section right here where these two come together, this is one section and then from there down is another section right where that, that joint is. We're just gonna run some screws from the top and bottom and just kind of squeeze those together. But we had to do that because I didn't buy, only buy eight foot two by four material. I didn't think to buy uh, 10 footers. But since this wall is bowed, like what I was talking about, what we're gonna have to do is float it off like that. And that looks pretty, pretty plumb right there how we have it. None of this is in yet. We just kind of threw it in here. But we're gonna kind of mess with this and manipulate it to where we can get it where it's just a flush wall and then we're just gonna screw it to the floor, screw it to the ceiling, and we're gonna call it good. We're also gonna put some bracing in here. So when, you, when we actually get that MDF sheet on here, you won't be able to push on it. Cause that, that's one thing I hate about um, Wayne's coating and I learned that real early, even though this isn't Wayne's coating, it's similar construction. 
that when you can push on a panel because there's not enough adhesive behind it, it's really irritating. It just feels like not solid. So we're gonna do put some bracing through here so if someone touches this, it's not like moving, that would not be good. And then this two by four material, we actually ripped it on the table saw because because this thing was bowed out so much, like an inch. We took an inch off of all this material. That way when we come with our three and a half inch casing, we can cover up all that. So that's something else we had to do. So really it's just getting creative and figuring this stuff out. And that's, that's where we're at now. And what I'm using for this, these are just construction screws and they're three inch and these are really coarse and I like them for stuff like this. All right, we went ahead and put some bracing in there. We just shot those with nails and all that's gonna do is when that MDF gets on there, it's gonna fill up that whole area and you won't be able to push on it. So those are about those are roughly one foot by one foot. I think they're like 13 and three eighths wide and 15 and a quarter vertical. So with a one foot by one foot section like that, you're not gonna be able to push on the half inch MDF and, and it, it's gonna give, that's not gonna happen. But I think right here I should be good. And what I'm thinking, if I take this three inch screw and just drive it down, I've got an inch and a half of that two by four that we ripped. Then we got three quarter inch hardwood, three quarter inch subfloor, if there's a subfloor, which more than likely this isn't just glued to the foundation, this floor. So I'm gonna try that. If not, I'll switch to a smaller screw or something. But let's see what we got here. Thing ain't going nowhere. It's drilled into the hardwood, which is nailed down, so we should be good to go. It ain't gonna stress that hardwood out either, because it's not like it's gonna be pulling up on it. It's just gonna be, this thing is tight in here. Structurally sound in the middle too. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. We need to come out. I need to come out like a quarter. So check this out. We got our bubble right there, right where we want it. Right in the middle of those two lines. And it's like that the whole way down. I mean, you can see a significant gap back here. We had to put this brace in right there. We screwed it in to the center stud right here and then just screwed it in uh, to the the actual stud on the house back there. But that's just gonna keep it from wiggling around. And now we can stop being framers and start being finished carpenters again. So I think our goal now for the rest of this day is to just wrap this stuff with MDF. We're gonna wrap it with MDF. We're not gonna be using MDF on any of the actual styles and rails or casings. We're gonna be using all finger joint pine on that stuff because this is all paint grade obviously with MDF. But uh, yeah, don't, I don't really mind using MDF for panel stuff, but I don't really like using MDF and working with it that much, but it is the industry we work in and it's cheaper. So some people want to go with the cheaper option and we do it. When you're working with this stuff, you don't want to shoot you don't want to shoot in here where you're going to have to fill in those holes, especially with MDF when it, MDF when it puffs up. But we can shoot all around the perimeter because that's going to be hidden. So I'm going to put this Loctite PL375, it just means Proline 375. It's adhesive. And I'm going to put that pretty heavy in the middle. And I'm going to put a bead on the outside too because I don't want it to be teeter-tottering in there. 
when it has some just in one spot. What we'll do is we'll take that flooring mallet and smash that adhesive down. No, I like those screws. That uh, little gap up there, we'll have all that covered with the styles and rails anyways, uh -huh. so that'll be good. One more piece of MDF to do here on this side, and then I think we're going to call it good because it's getting dark. It gets dark so early this time of year, but we have the seam right here, but that doesn't matter because since we're replicating the pillar, if you remember, that's exactly how high that middle rail is for the pillar. So we strategically put the seam there because we knew that we would have a seam anyways and then that rail is gonna cover in the middle of that. You won't see any of those nail holes, none on the perimeter. And we're gonna let that cure overnight. That, well, it's gonna cure until we paint it on Wednesday, but it's just all gonna get tightened up tonight. But we're gonna do this one, last one, but I think that's going to do it for this video. That's all we got to do for the rest of this this day. We're just going to put that piece of MDF in there. We're not going to get to the smaller ones today because we got to put all this in the truck here. Uh, this is everything we ripped out from their work. So all that, we got to load that up and it's cloudy. I don't want the sun to set. So that's going to do it for this one. I did use the easy speedy fin system with my flex vault today for the first time. And I got the flex bolt eight and a quarter table saw. I got the um, six amp hour batteries on that one, two nine amp hour batteries on this one. Still running the rigid over there, the four amp hour batteries. Um, these are, you know, the flex volt, DeWalt blades that come with it. I got a Diablo on that. So that's just a little tool update, what we've been doing out here. And I love this thing so far, so good. I'm not using the massive extensions today because I'm not doing really long runs. We're just doing those casings. But just these supports, these flip aways, whenever we did the framing, I use these flip aways. It was awesome. And these guys don't pay me anything to say that. I'm giving you the honest truth right now. So anyways, thanks for watching this video. We will be back tomorrow at this house to finish up this job with the installation then on wednesday we're going to be painting thanks so much for watching i'll see y'all tomorrow take care